The NDP is holding its convention this weekend, voting on its official platform. Question. Will a few anti-growth, anti-Israel apples spoil this barrel? Or is the party really ready to go mainstream to face reality and start appealing to Canadians outside the socialist tent? David Aiken is the host of The Battleground here on the Sun News Network. He's our man on the scene in, in Montreal. And folks, there's going to be a little bit of a delay between my questions and David's answers because we've got a, a technology issue there. Uh, David, uh, question number one. Do you think Thomas Mulcair can make this party look mainstream this coming weekend, despite all of the oddball resolutions? Yes. Uh, and you know what? I think back, and here's why I think so. I look back to the 2005 Conservative Convention. And if you remember that, that was an opposition party in 2005. The media called their leader Mr. Angry. Mulcair's got his anger issues. And the Conservatives, just like the uh, New Democrats, have what I'll call ideological purists. Uh, some in the party call them extremists. Either way, there's going to be people in this party, just like in the Conservatives, that want to advance, you know, important grassroots issues, some of which, on, for the NDP side, are outside the mainstream. For example, here is, uh, this is the Marxist voice of labor and youth. It's being uh, distributed here at the NDP convention. And these Marxists will be trying to get the NDP to, quote, pull out of NAFTA, uh, the WTO and other bankers deals that are the tools of imperialist exploitation. Yes, you will see people try to get that on the floor. But you know what? There's going to be 1,800 people here, and these 1,800 people can smell power. They know they're the official opposition. They know they've got to trim the rough edges off their party, and that's what you're going to see this weekend. I mean, you know, weird stuff could happen, but these 1,800 people are going to vote for pretty mainstream stuff, stuff that a lot of people will argue with. I mean, there's still lots of differences between the Democrats, liberals, and conservatives, but the real imperialist exploitation stuff, not a vote on that this weekend. We ran a clip earlier of uh, the Prime Minister reacting to the uh, Bouleries uh, noise. Uh, Mulcair still hasn't reacted to that. It'll be interesting to see if he says anything in Montreal at the convention. But uh, Harper did point out that uh, Bouleries and others have ties to a very radical separatist outfit, radical left-wing separatist outfit in Quebec called Quebec Solidaire. Do you think there'll be any Quebec Solidaire noise in, in Montreal? Oh, absolutely. In fact, I was just on Twitter a minute ago looking at all the people gathering on Twitter to talk about this. And a member of Quebec Solidaire is going to be speaking to any New Democrat who wants to come to the room set aside for him to speak. Here's the thing. In Quebec, there's a whole lot of, quote, social justice parties. Quebec Solidaire, the Parti Québécois, the Bloc Québécois, and the federal New Democrats. There's only one social justice party federally. And that's the New Democrats. So the federal New Democrats, there is no provincial NDP. So the federal New Democrats do end up getting a lot of these fo these uh, folks from provincial parties, the Quebec Solidaire, that are a little more radical but still believe in social justice. They don't have anywhere else to go uh, if they want to support a federalist party or get involved on a federal scene. So you bet the Quebec Solidaire is here, uh, members of that party. Uh, they're going to be talking to people. Uh, but again, uh, you know, let's see how far that goes with the, you know, three or four hundred delegates from British Columbia or Saskatchewan, who have a very different idea than the Quebec Solid Air folks do about Canada. Well, social justice, I mean, that, that's putting perfume on the pig, isn't it? I mean, isn't the pig uh, what it is? Isn't it Marxist-Leninism that they believe in? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's, there, it's, you know, left and, and a little bit lefter and, and really further left. You're right. But this is the this is the party of the left. It's not like the uh, n not necessarily like the, the liberals and conservatives may have find some more common ground. This is the only uh, real uh, party of the left on the national spectrum. So it attracts the Marxists, the Leninists, the Trotskyites, the Maoists, you name it. And a challenge, of course, for Tom Mulcair and the federal NDP is they want to win the next election by appealing to suburban Ontario, suburban Calgary, suburban Vancouver, mainstream voters uh, who may not like Marxist, Leninism, Mao, Trotsky, etc. So uh, this is one of those things where, hey, it's uh, it's called democracy. It's grassroots. Uh, the uh, extremists, the ideological purists, uh, they're going to try and have their uh, day in the sun here at this convention. Uh, and I think the majority of New Democrats here are going to try and say, yeah, OK, that was that was us when we were kids. We've grown up and here's our ideas about how to run a Canadian economy. Let's uh, move to uh, what else is happening this weekend. It looks like a coronation for Justin Trudeau. You've done a great job over the last few weeks, uh, David Aiken, of uh, giving us all the various combinations and permutations, how it, it could be a little bit more dramatic than a coronation. But what, what's your take as of tonight? 
Uh, well, I think, uh, well, first of all, I'm surprised at the very high voter turnout. I mean, there's still a little time to vote. It's a week-long voting process, only online and by telephone. And, you know, uh, 87,000 or so of the 127,000 eligible voters have already cast a ballot, and they can do so till Sunday at 3 o'clock Eastern. So that's pretty good voter turnout. It's going to be probably north of 70%. Uh, we didn't see that kind of voter turnout when the NDP chose Thomas Mulcair last year. Their voter turnout was around, uh, you know, 51, 52 uh, percent. So that's the first thing. That's encouraging for liberals to see high voter turnout. Um, and I think we're going to see, yes, I think uh, Trudeau has a good chance to win on the first ballot, but there could be two ballots. And that would mean that on the first ballot, Trudeau did not get 50 percent plus one, that liberals voted for, for a majority of liberals voted for somebody else. And I think that might be the only interesting drama of the weekend. I think Trudeau will win it, but whether it's one ballot or two. Who's going to finish second? I think it's going to be Joyce Murray. Joyce Murray has some ideas about cooperating with the very folks who are going to be sitting behind me all weekend with New Democrats. Uh, she is the anybody but Harper candidate. And if it means uh, getting in bed with uh, New Democrats, Greens, whatever, uh, Joyce Murray uh, thinks liberals ought to do that. Trudeau says, no, we ought not to do that. Now, here's the thing, uh, Charles. We're looking at some new polls, including our own, that suggest uh, the liberals don't need to cooperate. They are showing some strength again. We'll see if that's just because of the convention or, uh, you know, if that's going to be uh, the new long-term trend. David Aiken, uh, you were uh, tweeting something early this morning that I was uh, looking at, and it was from our friends at Abacus, David Coletto's organization, and it was about favorability numbers, and Justin has good favorability numbers in all demographics, in all parts of the country right now, lots of likability, something you and I have talked about before on TV and on, on radio, but, but the number that I'm always looking at is the number for, is he qualified to be prime minister? Because unless he can cross that threshold, uh, everything else to me just becomes a bunch of small talk. It doesn't look like he's crossed that threshold to me. Not yet, but he's got two years, don't forget. And you're right, that is a very important number to consider. But he starts with a whole lot of goodwill. And, you know, anybody taking over any party would love to have these kind of numbers to begin with, where Canadians, by and large, think highly of Trudeau, think he's likable, uh, think he's got a good vision for the country, all, all these sort of mushy, warm, good feelings. So that's, I guess, good for Trudeau. But you're right, a lot of, more Canadians still believe he's more styled in substance, and not a lot of them are, say, are ready to say he'd make the best PM. But as they say, he and his people will have two years uh, to firm up their policies, to present himself as a potential uh, prime minister. And my line of the day is, well, you know, Trudeau has got two years to figure out economics. Harper's got two years to figure out getting a better haircut. I mean, I don't know how Harper will match up against Trudeau, because the only thing he could do is, what is he going to do, make himself more popular? I think Harper, the prime minister, just has to continue to govern. But so does Mulcair. Mulcair would rather compete against Harper on that competence factor, on being perceived as a good administrator, rather than try to compete with Trudeau and his, uh, and his style. So here's the question. I know you don't like to make yourself at the, the center of things because you want to be a pure journalist, but uh, humor me here, David. If, if, if Harper went to your stylist, uh, would that uh, bump up his likables? I'm not so certain, Charles. I'm pretty sure no one wants to go to my stylist, but uh, right. but we'll see. You, we've seen we've seen Harper try to make himself a little more cuddly. You know, he's, all these hockey pictures, day in the life with his kittens. Um, you know, the, the man is uh, trying to open himself up a bit. David, we'll be looking for you all weekend long at the NDP convention in Montreal. Thank you as always.